All right, I'm Dave Ritzko from Transtar Industries. I'm their technical product specialist. Today, I want to talk about converters. Now, for those of you who've been around a long time, you've probably seen them and know what makes it tick. For some of the new people that are coming around in that, it's one of them things that get blamed a ton for issues. And sometimes it's not it. Most of the time, it's not it. So what I want to do is kind of open one up for you and kind of shows you what make these tick. Again, this is what a converter would look like. You'd put it on a lathe, cut it around, and then they part it up. Now, if you've torn down a transmission, there are a ton of parts. One thing in a converter, there's not that many pieces to it. That does not make it not technical putting it together. And yes, if you assemble it wrong, if you do different things, wrong to it yes you can create havoc there's different type of hubs there's slotted hubs there's hubs with flats there's hubs that have none of this that the pump is driven by splines inside the converter so let's get right into it and i want to take you through just a little bit of history on a converter at one time they weren't even called a torque converter it was called a fluid coupling and basically what it was, was these two parts that have the fins in there. Now, how do they work? The one set of fins is attached to the engine. So as it spins, it picks up fluid and it drives it through into the other side, which now turns the pump gears, creates pressure, makes the car move. So basic principle, if you took two fans and put them face to face and you turn one fan on, the other fan's going to start moving from the airflow from it. So replace the air with fluid. That's what you get. Well, fluid couplings weren't very user friendly. You had to give a lot of throttle to get enough fluid moving to make it launch the car. So what they came out with was another component called the stator. And basically, this rides on a one-way clutch, locks one way, free wheels the other. And how this kind of works, basically, is as the fluid is picking up and going into the other side, it's going through the stator, and because of the weird or uh, really tight angle of it, it takes the fluid and instead of just lopping it over to the next part, it's forcing it over. So it's a torque multiplier. And why does it have to free wheel? Well, when you want torque multiplication, you want the fluid coming, hitting it and redirecting it like right now. I mean, right now it's turning it. But after you get going so fast, you really don't need the torque multiplication so now it'll start to be a neutral component and freewheel. Step on the gas, it'll lock, throw more torque. Cruising down the highway, it will freewheel and allow it to go through. It's a very good component. Two ways this will fail. If the sprag in or the roller clutch inside of it locks up and it not move, you're probably not gonna get over 30, 35 miles an hour. It's gonna sound like the engine's a jet engine. It's just gonna make a lot of noise, but you're not gonna go anywhere. The second way it fails, if it would be allowed to freewheel both ways. If it freewheels both ways, chances are you're not gonna get the car to move and or barely move. And we used to test these by going up to a parking block. And if the car will jump the parking block, this isn't bad that way. So again, that's just one way to tell. It could be the forward clutches, could be something else. But if it'll jump that parking block, it is not this, because trust me, when this goes bad, it won't. So somewhere along, this is what we call an open converter, the stator and the two fin parts. So around the late 70s, early 80s, the gas crunch. What they decided to do, because as long as this has fluid, it's not a solid and it'll allow slippage. 
So how do we squeeze a little bit more gas out? If we could make this a solid component, more or less. So what they've done is they've added another component. So instead of having just these three components, what they've added is a clutch. It has a lining. The cover is machined to accept this. And so how it works, and again, these are basics. This thing has oil going down through it. There's a oil between the cover and this disc, and it kind of floats in there. When the oil is exhausted, whether it's a lockup valve, a lockup solenoid, that releases the oil behind that cover, this more or less locks now to the back cover, which is splined to this part, which is connected to this part, welded to this part. It becomes one unit, it's a lock-up clutch. Now, lock-up clutches have sure come a long way. You can have, for the old on-off lock-ups, which pretty much everything's PWM, which is pulse width modulated. And in other words, instead of this slamming down and locking up directly, it's allowed to touch and go and I don't want to use the word chatter because chatter is something everybody blames the converter for and it's not necessarily the converter. Again, do your homework before you take it out and blame the converter for anything. Do some good diagnosing. So they had a tan paper. Then they had a carbon paper. Then they went to a carbon woven paper that would allow slippage because they don't want the customer necessarily to feel like another shift they want it to come on and be able to slip. Some of these constantly slip. Not my great idea of how a converter should work, but they do it. Getting fast forward, you can get into ZF, Mercedes, a lot of German units, uh, American units are starting. They have clutch plates, similar to a clutch drum that would have stacked plates in them. It could have two, three, four, five, depending on the application and the car. So again, Really, when you look at a converter compared to what you have to deal with at the transmission, and this is not taking any way from the converter rebuilders because there is a little bit of an art and a science to it. So again, there's really only so many components that could go bad or go wrong. So you have the lining that could go bad. You have a couple bearings that could go bad. A lot of units will have washers. They get cut down, bearings added to make them a little more robust and heavy duty. And again, it's, it's just a few components. This happens to have an O-ring and that's what seals the oil, whether it allows it in or out. And again, oil, there could be a metal clad seal inside that would be changed by the converter builder. But basically, when you look at a converter, there's only so many components that makes it tick to make it go down the road. So when you start blaming the converter that only has a few parts versus the transmission has a lot of parts, just remember it's pretty simple. But then again, it can cause a lot of grief. Transstar has our own brand Recon. We have a CVC converter and we have Pro Torque converter. You're going to be hearing more about Pro Torque. Now, if you want to go fast and you want a high stall converter, Pro Torque's what you're going to want. They have regular shelf models for your weekend racer type guys. But if you really want one to go, you're going to have to give a lot of information about the horsepower, about your differential, about your tires, about all kinds of things. And they will make a converter that'll fit your vehicle. And again, this is just a little spotlight on converters. You can check all the converters on transcend.us, visit our website at transstar1.com, or as always, you can contact your Transstar sales rep. Thank you for watching.